is there such a thing as negative vacancy? What even is that, right? So usually every single time that you calculate a, a rental, right? Maybe it's an apartment, whatever it is, right? Let's just say you calculate somewhere between like four to 8% vacancy. And it depends on like the area and a whole bunch of other factors, right? But you always calculate that in because sometimes, you know, COVID happens and you can't rent a unit out or something happens and you just have, want to have those reserved. But in some cases, you can get a negative vacancy. So it's a vet negative vacancy mean. Um, it's just something I made up and something that I've done multiple times, which is sweet, right? So let's say that someone, they got their lease to the end of June and they end up moving out early. They end up moving out like two weeks early. You wanna try to get on this video? Oh, no. Um, so they move out on like June 15th. And if you're like me, I as soon as I know that the people are moving out, I'm putting the place up for rent. So like June 1st, the place is up for rent and I'm showing it, I'm throwing videos out there, I'm trying to find tenants, right? A lot of times I do find the tenants within a week or two. I have them locked in for like, you know, for uh, July 1st. And a lot of times these tenants move, the tenants that are currently in the place move out early, right? And you, do, you, don't, you don't get a refund on, cause you're moving out early, right? So you get the whole month paid. So let's just say the guys are, the people that are living there, they move out June 15th. You got two or three days to do whatever, fix it, clean it, get it back up to snuff. And you throw the idea at the other tenants, like, hey, I know your lease actually ends on 6.30. It's kind of a weird time for you. Do you want to move in on like, I don't know, 6.20 maybe, right? It gives you a five day buffer. So they're like, sure, yeah, why not? So when they do that, they actually end up paying a prorated amount for from the 20th to the 30th of June. So that's what I mean by negative vacancy, right? So if your place rents out for like, I don't know, $2,000 a month and you got an extra 10 days that you're collecting rent on it, if you do the math, I don't, I can't do the math, but let's just say for that month of June, you're collecting 2,000 from the previous tenants and then another four or 500 from the new tenants moving in, essentially making $2,500 a month that month because you kind of had that perfect storm of the old tenants moving out early and the new tenants moving in er early. Yeah, <laughs> early. So there is such a thing as negative vacancy, but that's just the bonus. That's like a cherry on top. Don't bank on that. Always run a vacancy number four to eight percent. Obviously, it depends on your area and everything else in your calculation when you buy a property. But just know sometimes, and it doesn't always work that way, right? It usually doesn't. But if it does, that's awesome, right? Because you just, like I said, cherry on top. You just made another five hundred dollars. What a great month, right? Everything's awesome. Um, so. Hope this video helped, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend.